Really? Put these in so it'd be easier for you. You're afraid to go out? You can do it. You can do it. Go on, Turbo. You can do it. I promise. You can make it. You'll make it down the stairs. I promise. Come on. Come on. There you go. Good boy. You're good boy. <laughs> but you're the one who wanted out. Go potty. Go on. Go do your thing. Begging me like you needed to go out. Hey, what's up, Gardner Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. New steps are being built. They're not done. This isn't what it's going to look like when it's finished. This better not be. This is cold out it's 33 degrees it was 86 degrees yesterday plummeted to 26 degrees overnight got lucky somehow there weren't any tornadoes don't know how they pulled that off i know there were some up north windy lots of plants you can't even see it things are messy out here things have been blowing around and i don't know why i'm starting the vlog in the middle of the night but uh, here we are oh well i'm not really going to be around to show the steps tomorrow so this needed to be the before I guess the before should have been before the construction started. I have a picture before the boards got put on there. That's something. Yeah, you get it. There's new steps that hopefully are going to be curved out with some nice designs to them. The front will be wrapped. Probably going to put some lights on them. Creative juices are flowing, so who knows what this will evolve into. Okay, Turbs. Where'd you go? It is cold. What's taking so long? I guess I don't have to be out here with them. What I need to do is spend a little bit of time inside in the grow space and see about moving a few plants around and give some updates on some plants. It's been a minute since y'all have seen some of the plants that are in there. So if you're going to be moving things around, be a good time to talk about them. Yes, the Christmas lights are still on. The Thuges. I told y'all when I put them on there, once those are on, they're not coming off. Okay, you run up the stairs, no problem. Well, that's good. That's more than I can say for Toby. He's, he's not a fan. Which is interesting, because he was one of the reasons that those new steps were being put in. Remember, turn the heater off, because that's going to make some noise. Is it not working? Sometimes it doesn't work. There we go. That's just Toby, though. He has the thing about floors. When the floor changes, anytime he's going from a tile to a hardwood, he just doesn't know what to do. And it's not an old dog thing. It certainly doesn't help that he's gotten older and his balance isn't as good, but since he was a puppy, if I take him to a friend's house and they had a wooden deck and try and let him out, he would just, like, st stumble, stutter back and forth, and you'd have to convince him. It took a very long time to convince him to go outside and step on the scary wooden floor. I'll get used to it. So here's the plants. There it is. Here's a nice look. All good now, right? Garden tour done. I'm kidding. That's not what's going on here. I'll have a better look at things. I need to move the small plants, like just these little guys that are in the starter, the starter plugs, down to the bottom shelf, keep medium plants on here, and then anything that's large enough and it's going to want it warmer with the proper airflow that's going on up here, things that'll be compatible with the aeroids, are going to go up top. The working plant tour, I suppose. I'm not specifically going around with an angle to talk about every single plant, but if I pick it up and move it and it's fresh in my mind, then we'll talk about it. I'll start off with the elbow here. It's looking pretty good. Got some crispy where it went all like half moonish over there, but otherwise been grown like a champ. The foliage on it is just beautiful. This has been a trooper. It's a monstero. It's no surprise there. It gets moved around in here all the time because it's sitting right in front of the shelves. So I have to scoot it around fairly often. I need to also put it up onto a pole because it's just, look at this little stick. That's not doing anything. At least not anything significant. I'm going to let that stay there. When I move those aeroids around, I think I'm going to use the base of those palms to store things as I move them. I keep wanting to call this Oogie Boogie. I don't I don't know why. I think because there's a jungle boogie philodendrons. This is one of the ring of fires that I picked up not that long ago. This thing's a grower. I'm, it's got all kinds of new growth on it since I picked it up. Really should go into a new container. I think it would appreciate that because it's still in this tiny little thing. It's an epiphyte, so... Doesn't really matter. It's not showing me any kinds of issues, but I think that it would be better for the plant to bump it up. Now, I have a separate spot where I'm setting things that I need to repot so that I can remember to repot them before I move them over. I'm trying to think. This is a form of Eureka palm that's going to stay here. So, really, it's the little guys I should probably start down below. Sorry, for, I know some people get really annoyed with the thinking out loud stuff, but that's it's a vlog. That's what's happening here. This is dead. Don't know what, well, that's a weed. Don't remember what was in there. This tag goes to the Regali, which is up there. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. So I've got some green on there. I'm going to pull this weed out of it. Whatever little piece of nettle. Okay, apparently much easier said than done. Take that, it can go up to the top shelf with the other aeroids. As long as it's still firm and there's some green in there, it could still bounce back. Oh, I just did so much talking and I wasn't recording. I, what was I saying? Down here. These are small plants. They can stay the Velite. 
Billy, that needs to be moved. This is a terrible location for it. In fact, this might even need a repot. I'm not sure. Not even certain why it ended up down there. Good amount of sap on the stem, which makes me think something might be sucking on it. Need to pay attention to that. What is that? Zoom in, see if we can get a better look at it. Better not be what I think it might be. I thought there was a thrip in there, but I think it's just a fungus gnat that got stuck to some sap. Probably, okay, zoom back out. People need to see what's happening here. Say it's safe to say that the lily should probably go up here with the rest of the aeroids. That shelf is starting to get full. I think it'll be much happier up there. More airflow. It's pretty warm and humid. There is a significant difference between this top shelf and the bottom shelf down here maybe four to five degrees depending on how cold it is outside it's over 40 outdoors the temperature in here is pretty stable but there are plenty of days during the winter when it's not even close to 40 and that's when things are cooler down low this is an epiphyllum that's in a pot that is just crumbling like you touch this look at it that needs to be repotted move that over to hang out with the repots I don't know why there's a dome down here. Must have popped off of one of these other guys. Have a philodendron over here that has been sitting over here for a long time. Like a year, basically. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the philodendron maximum from uh, Equigenera. Sturdy philodendron. Very sturdy. I can tell you that much about it. And also uh, make sure that it has room because that's what happens when you have them too close to the grow lights. It's okay. It'll straighten itself back out and it'll look good. The stuff that's on there, that's all some of the super blue pothos. I'll pull that off and get this moved. Set that up there. Also, I'm about to use y'all as my eyes because I can't see what's going on up there. I heard something fall over. I think I knocked over a plant up top. I have some scaffolding. It's not here yet, but when I get the scaffolding, I'll be able to stand right here and have better access to that top shelf. I don't want to move the plants out of so wait, what's going on? Why are we, what's going Is there water in here? There shouldn't be. Oh, I must, I bet whatever it was I knocked over was a self-watering container. And now the water that was in the self-watering container is doing its thing and raining down. That's okay. A little extra moisture. No big deal. Ripsalis. Love this plant. Absolutely fantastic succulents. I don't know if you've ever grown them. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. He's like, oh, give it to me. Apparently it decided to reach over into a pot that had some cat grass in it. At, at one point it had some cat grass in it. Not anymore. And it grabbed onto some loose soil that was in the bottom of the tray. That's nice. I don't have to clean that up. It did the job for me. Really easy to propagate. I can just take this over to my potting bench, take a pair of scissors, trim all that off, and set it into some new mix. And that'll all take off into its own thing. Aren't they fun? Just fun, stringy plants. Pretty sturdy for a succulent that grows so vigorously. These are fun to grow in really big vases and terrariums. They get really full and pretty. Okinawa silver. This is one of the reasons that I've been doing everything I've been doing over here with these shelves is because clearly the plants have needed to be moved around. That doesn't sit down there anymore. Well, look at the poor thing. It's just been cooking and it's hard to get to the plants on the bottom shelf too. That's why I prefer to just have the starters down there. Well, starters and succulents, things that have been doing well down here can stay down here. Like this, uh, I want to call it an anthurium, bird's nest fern. This bird's nest fern loves this location. Everywhere else I put it, it does not appreciate it. So as long as it ain't broke, I'm not going to try and fix it. I think what it likes about this spot is that it gets some drippage when I water plants. It comes through here. It gets it nice and wet in the middle. It's cool, but still humid. This one's been around on the channel for a long time. Got some insect damage and some browning on it from the summertime last year. Very slow grower. I'm just happy it's alive because this is not one of the easier bird's nest ferns to grow. It tends to be more high maintenance and picky about heat and humidity. But if you are able to grow them, I highly suggest Because look at that foliage. Isn't that beautiful? Even though it's got some damage in it because it's a finicky plant. You move it around and... Things happen to it, it throws a fit. But even with the imperfections, it's just, come on, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is a gorgeous leaf. I love that one. Okay, I think everything else that's left down here are things that I would like to keep down here. Have some Echeverias and Peperomia, and that freed up a lot of space for all the little plants that are up here. This is a Frydeck, a little teeny tiny one, variegated Alocasia Frydeck from the Green Escape. Fried eggs are great. Love the fried egg. Picked this one up from a seller who's absolutely horrible and I wouldn't order from them. They were called Sunshine Greens Etsy. There's a whole video about them. 
I'd ordered multiples. They sent me one, so that got me to place another order because I wanted multiples of them for some planters I'm going to be doing in the springtime. So this one I've had for probably, I'd say, a month longer than the other one. And it showed up about the same size as the one from Green Escape, the one on the right. And see how much growing it's done? And the leaves. They have such fun variegation. Like, you get the splatchy stuff, and you get some with giant chunks, and you have some that's not even white, and some that's all kinds of craziness. It's fun. Kind of nice variety. Itty bitty succulents to the back. They're the ones who don't need the water as much, and they're the ones that I'm most likely to forget to water. Uh, this one. Okay, fun story. This one right here, this is a variegated birkin. I think it's called pink birkin. Bloodendron. I ordered two of these last year, maybe from the Green Escape, I don't remember. I took one outside during the summer and left the other one inside. This is the one that I left inside. Let me show you the one that I took outside. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty big size different, right? Different. Pretty big size difference, right? This one I have sitting over with my plants that need to be repotted. It's definitely ready for a larger pot. It's started to put out its first leaf with some variegation on it. Isn't that cool? I imagine it'll look even more neat when all of the foliage has that on there. But this is done. It doesn't need to be in a starting mix anymore. That can go up into a proper aeroid mix. And I imagine it'll start to grow even more. And it's offsetting like crazy. The offsets are <laughs> about the same size as the plants were when I got them and not that much smaller than the one that stayed in here over the summer. Natural light makes a big difference with the plants. Also, I think a big part of it has more to do with the fact that I kept the other one in a spot where it was near my mister, so it was getting a good amount of water with all that nice summer heat. That really gets them moving, whereas in here, they were just getting watered. It was really nothing special. This is the Double Dot Maculata, another plant from Green Escape that is just freaking awesome. It's just a maculata with extra dots. You know there are variegated sports starting to come out that look pretty similar to this that are awesome and it would be neat to get my hands on one of those. But I really do appreciate just those silver splotches. Looks like somebody took a metallic paint pen and just painted all over those leaves. This is a begonia that arrived basically dead from Hertz and I said well I'll hold on to it. There's a little bit of green in there and see what happened. And there it's been a month. Nothing happened. It looks terrible. So that is trash. The Limezinger Xanthosomas. I had four. This is, again, part of that Hertz order. They were supposed to be nice, big, beautiful plants, and they showed up seemingly dead. That whole order was refunded. I'll link the two videos I've been referring to down in the description if you want to get caught up and you don't know what I'm talking about. Out of the four that they sent, there were just these three that seemed like they still had some potential. So I cut them back really, really far. This one I cut back down to below the soil line and ended up having to lift it up above the soil line. And the other two have started to push up new foliage from their main growing point. And this one even has a shoot coming up. Looks like this one does too. And this one, since basically the entire corm was killed off on it, I just had to hold on to it because that usually means that they'll offset a lot. And it is. We've got one, two, three four offsets from that. There was still enough going on down low inside of the plant for it to say, hey, 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 we can do something with this. Not gonna be able to keep growing like we were, but can put up some babies and get things moving. I want these down here so that they will be closer to the light. I think that's gonna be better for their growth, for sure. Having them down there, right? I mean, look at that. Very close to the light. Uh, this back here is the Marble Galaxy Pink Princess, I think is what it's called. That was another one that I got not too long ago. It's actually opened up two leaves since I got it. So it's been fairly vigorous for being a plant that was just inside of a plug. That definitely does not need to be up on that other shelf. No way if that's been getting the kind of light that I would prefer to it to be getting up there. Who else is tiny and can be moved down here? I have this Ludicia here that I could move it down. Yeah, I think it'll be okay down here. I'm gonna keep it wedged so that it stands out and I can remember to really get the water in there to it. Cause I worry that if it's that small, I won't notice it. Uh, the Apopolis, Apop, blah, 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 blah. This guy, uh, I really, I like it, but man, it is a thirsty plant. I have to water this thing a lot. Look at that foliage though. It does have some really nice leaves on This would be great in a terrarium. And I think that that is probably something that I would like to do with it, would be to get it into something big and glass where I won't have to water it as often. I'm hopeful that this will straighten its growth out on its own. I don't want to mess with it too much. It didn't have a ton going on with it root-wise. 
when I potted it up and I'd still like for that to have some more time before I start doing anything with it. Alochesia down here. I can't remember what it's called. It's basically a variegated lutea. It was limp and didn't have much going on root-wise at all when I received it. And you can see it started to sturdy itself up fairly well. It's put out a couple of new leaves. This should probably go to the bottom shelf. The only reason that I'm hesitant to move it down there is because the alocasias have been spider mite magnets all winter. I have to spray them the most. My concern is that if I move it down to this lower shelf, something may get on it and then I won't notice and then it's harder to get the spray on there. You get it, right? It just seems like it's probably a better idea to keep it right here. And also, it's stretched out enough that I think that it would be too close to the lights down there. This, you guys remember, we'll save that one. It's too pretty. Gotta wait to talk about that one. I have a little shivriana down here. Done a lot of growing. Tons of growth on this one. But remember, the grow light used to be lower over here. I think I have two of these little ones that have easily tripled in size since I got them back in probably October, I want to say. They're looking great. These should probably get potted up together, I think, right? Is that something I should do now? I should probably wait. I could easily put those, I think, into a six inch or an eight inch container and let them form their own nice bush. I'm hesitant to move those too. I think that they would actually probably really like it down there, but I... I don't know what my hesitancy is. I just, I think I just like them right here. This is a Tillandsia. It does not need to be right there. It's one of the Sanes. It has the really pretty pink quills on them, or it's called the pink quill type of bromeliad. These are pretty easy to get to rebloom. It can definitely go down lower. It is not a picky plant when it comes to its light exposure. I'm not concerned about making sure to get natural light through the window up here. This was the Waikiki that just kept getting covered in spider mites and I sprayed it and sprayed it and sprayed it and I think I sprayed it too much. So that's gone. It's a dead now. This is a <laughs> Look at what happened here. So this is why it's a good idea to not keep the plants too close together. You end up having situations like this where you have lots of dead foliage on the bottoms of the plants. This is a Syngonium. Don't remember the name on it, but it has the fun little spear-shaped leaves on it that I think I'm... I mean, should it go up or down? I don't know what to do. It can go down here. I'm being way too protective of it. I think it was even potentially getting too much light. Was that shot even in frame? Probably not. It's fine back there. It'll get repotted in a week or two. These are Fetonias that showed up basically dead. Looks like I'm starting to get some growth out of one of them. I'm going to say that other one's dead. There might be something green in there. I think that's just algae. Tiny little tie <laughs> tucked way over there in that corner. Done a little bit of growing, not much. Wouldn't really expect it to do much. Needs to do some rooting out. This is a Tradescantia. I think it would be very happy to be down here and closer to the lights. Have some more light down on them. Get it to move around and not be stretched out. The Pink Princess. This is a plant that I have kept for years and it's just one of the, I just, I don't care about this plant. I'm not going to throw it away. That upsets people. People get very upset when you throw plants away. Especially because there's lots of little pieces in there that I can cut out. So I think what I'm going to do is divide this up and give all the divisions away to friends. Because I just, I, I don't know. It just doesn't do anything for me. It may end up being the exact same situation with the Marble Galaxy in a few years. Who knows? As of right now... And, well, not as of right now, as of like the last few years. It's just not a plant that I really care about. An Eureka seedling right here. <laughs> Ficus tanicki, ruby. Elastica here that was way too close to those lights. That was another reason the shelves got moved up. Been a trooper of a plant, though. It's a standard, so it's got the tiny little chunky trunk on it. I've been liking that one. It's been fun. This is the, oh, I keep wanting to call it Lime Zinger, Philodendron Moonlight. It's great. Picked that up during a video where I took y'all to Plant Haven Nursery. You can get a good look in there. See a great big giant mealy bug hanging out in there, or there was, not anymore. That was another reason that I needed to do this. You need to get a good look at things. Every so often, it's a good idea to actually pick them up and look at them from top to bottom. You can see there's some more stuff on the inside in there. This can go over here because I don't think it really needs to be taken up the real estate it was taken up before. I'm going to be spraying with neem. Not as soon as this video is done, but tomorrow morning I'm going to water and do a heavy neeming. I've been doing that about once a week and it has made a huge difference in issues that I was having prior with spider mites. And it has somewhat 
maybe not even somewhat. I would say there, there's been a drastic improvement with the melee bugs. Even though I don't rely on Neem for melee bugs, it's definitely helping. I'm still seeing some around, but not that many. And if y'all watched the video where I went to that nursery, you may remember that they had a melee bug problem there at the nursery. And I did wash these off really well, but it's possible that that one may have just been a survivor that hung around and I had missed it. I don't know. There's a few on there. Everything will be getting sprayed, so not that worried about it. This Anthurium, Silver Bush. I also, I, is it Silver Bush or Silver Blush? Because when I used to Google Silver Bush, wasn't really getting many results. Regardless of its name, this is a sturdy Anthurium. I don't do great with the fancy Anthuriums. They're just not my thing. I think that's largely because I move my plants in and out. They go from being in here during the winter time to outside. And with some of the more fancy Anthuriums, mainly the Warwickianums, they just, they hate it. I move them outside, they drop their leaves. And then they regrow a few during the summer and I move them back inside and they drop their leaves. They just hate me. Let me show you. Here's my Warwickianum. Look, look at that. It's great, doesn't it? Beautiful plant. It was doing okay. And then I moved the shelves up. It only had one leaf on it, but it was a leaf that had regrown since it had been moved in here for the winter time. And within like, I don't know, four or five days, that leaf started to wither away. And I was like, no, nope. I just cut it off. Let that have a reset and start itself over and hope for the best. They're just, they're not my favorite. They're beautiful, but that one specifically hasn't been great. I think that with the Warwickianums and some other things, I might need to move to just find some that are seed grown from people who have had ones that are already pretty sturdy and maybe just not move those in and out, even though that's mostly what I do. I like to move my plants outside during the summer, so uh, it doesn't matter. We're talking about the silver bush. See the new foliage comes out this very soft color, kind of a light sort of uh, what uh, what a bronzy green maybe is what we would call that and then they age out this beautiful green that has lots and lots of shimmer in it can you see the shimmer i don't know how it's going to show on camera but trust me there's a good amount of okay yeah there it is you can see it right look at that isn't that freaking stunning it's like the plant was showered in diamonds diamond dust i want to move that one down there if it ain't broke don't fix it. And it has been very happy right here on the shelves. I'm not going to move it. It doesn't need to be here, but it, that's where it's going to stay because it's doing really well and Anthuriums usually hate me and this one, we're kind of getting along. So I'm not going to poke that bear. Okay. Orchids are staying here because like I was just saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They are happy right here. They haven't seemed to have minded having the lighting change on them. Same thing back here with this brass avola likes the natural light being close to the window so that's where it's going to stay the monstera i mean it is taking up space it doesn't need to be right here it's a tie it'll go pretty much anywhere i put it this, this shelf is getting full the anther not anthurium bird's nest fern casts a big shadow over a pretty wide spot so i don't know if that would be it's fine we'll just give it a try i'm gonna put it back here it's a monstera it should be fine back there just Wait and see what happens with it. I'm sure it'll be fine. All our plants towards the front. Hopefully they are happy here. They've been happy here. I don't want to move them. They look so good. What's left? I have the, where's the Okinawa silver? This I think will be much happier up here and I can pay better attention to it to watch out for spider mites in mealies. I think some natural light will be good for it. There's another Okinawa silver right next to it. Is that actually, I don't know. What is this? I think it's an Okinawa silver. It might be a uh, it might be a macro hyza though i don't think so though from looking at the inside growth and there's the stripage on that trunk isn't that beautiful trunk on the pseudo stem beautiful pseudo stems on these uh the mac variegated macro rises over here that's been a fun one it's a pain though it hasn't been the easiest of alocasias it can be a brat in a diva but i think it's worth it even when it does throw a fit and dies back it's an alocasia. It comes back from the roots. I'm thinking I'll probably maybe even get that in the ground this summer and get a lot more growth out of it. Musa no no looking much, much, much better. This had a spider mite outbreak, I don't know, a month and a half ago, something like that. And when that happened, I just cut the entire top off, threw it away, treated the whole thing with neem, got it repotted because it needed it badly and then moved it over here to the shelf. The problem though was that the shelf was too low. So the leaves were, you can see this leaf right here, had some trouble unfurling because it was up inside the light. Having the same situation over here with this Moose of Florida, 
So I'm gonna have to do something with this shelf next because that's not, see, that's not working. Look at how much leaf is up there inside of the light. I don't think the plant probably appreciates that. Worst case scenario with the bananas, sometimes I'll just cut the pseudo stem in half and let them grow up from a smaller spot. They don't seem to mind it. It'll be back to being that height by the time it's time to take it back outdoors anyways. The vanilla, great plant. Vanilla orchids is the variegated one. This was growing up in all of the shelves. I had to take that apart, unfortunately, in order to move the shelves around. It was really cool how it was going through everything. I think that I'll probably go ahead and rewrap it around everything just because that was so neat and it looked nice. The downside to having it growing up and all over the shelving was that it meant I couldn't move it outside during the summer. It didn't seem to mind that. It was in here with whatever else that I had left in here for the summertime and it was a trooper throughout the entire summer and this garage gets hot, really, really hot during the summertime. It didn't care. It was totally fine with it. So I would say for this, it should get a repot. I should definitely bump that up into a larger pot and then just very carefully and slowly get it rewrapped around the shelves. It is so good with putting out its aerial roots. If I had some kind of, I'm not going to do this, but if I had moss wrapped around these poles, it'd really be sinking those aerial roots in there and taking over. I think it's fine just having it draped around everything. There's a growth on it. I don't even know how much. It was, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half tall when I got this last year. And I'd say easily five feet at this point. Cause it goes down and wraps around. It goes all over the place. Okay, finally, I have wanted to get this elastica moved off of that shelf for such a long time because they do so much better over here. That was aggressive. I'm sorry, I hope I didn't hurt you. You see how stretched out and leggy it is? from being over there with the taller plants that were shading it. This will be much better. Also one that definitely needs a repot. This is a Teneki, I believe. Does it have a tag? I don't think it does. It's going to go back here for right now. This will be a fine spot for it. I may give this a significant cutback, like 50% can root these cuttings very easily. No problem. That'll encourage it to fill back out down below. Just with the lankiness, that would probably be the best thing to do. Pardon the Siba Blue. The lower growth has gotten crunchy as it is sending out tons and tons of growth all over the walls of my garage. It's a growth. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's all the way up there. It's pretty close to the ceiling and it's happy. It's healthy, but the lower stuff is just kind of starting to peter out. I'm starting to wonder if I might need to change these bulbs or LED, so I shouldn't need to, but I'm not really seeing the same growth out of things on this shelf that I usually do. So something's up there. Maybe I'll just add another one, put a third one in there, perhaps. I don't know. Everything's okay for the most part. And there's a heliconia back there, but they're never great during the winter time. I just like to get them along through the winter. And the banana's fine because it's right next to the light. Same with the parlor palm. Have the truly tiny over here. It's fine. But again, it's up there closer to the light. Whereas the stuff that's not looking great on the Cebu Blue Epiprenum. It's more the stuff on the inside. Everything that's up closer to the light seems to be okay. I almost forgot I have this Tredescantia. I think it's called Sweetness, something like that. I can't see the Ophelin 40. The other one I showed you was the Sweetness. I think it would be happier over here on the shelf where it's gonna be closer to the lights. This one, the top shelf, that's really far away from the lights. I don't have a lot up here on this top shelf, just a couple of begonias and a cactus that really shouldn't even be there, a lickety split philodendron. I could definitely get some more plants up here. Something to think about when I start moving around some of the larger plants is what would I even want to pick up and put up there. I'm also thinking about maybe bumping this shelf up so that it's the same height as this one. I'm gonna have the scaffolding out here anyways to stand on. So I may as well raise this up so that there's some more room down here for these plants. And then these will be just a smidge closer to their grow lights. I'm gonna have to get a ladder out here anyway so I have new lights to go up here. So, makes sense, right? I have this adorable palm tree down here that I wanted to find a spot for on the shelf. I don't know if that's going to fit. Maybe I didn't move as many things down low as I should have, but I can't because things are shaded down there. And this is pretty good. I think that what I have going on down here, this is a good improvement. Everything that's down here should be pretty happy with the change. I don't want to move anything if it's not going to be improving on its conditions, right? That wouldn't make any sense to do. Yeah, I don't know. Some of these things are decisions that I'm going to have to sit and think about and tinker around with in my head. So there will probably be some changes that I'll talk about in next Saturday's video. This is just the very beginning of 
scooting some stuff around. I think that it's a good start, too. The only plant left that I think deserves some attention, because, well, it was in a video when I unboxed it, is this Alocasia blizzard. This Alocasia has been so fantastic. I think that sometimes the leaves have too much white on them. I've noticed that the more white a leaf has, the more problems it has unfurling and looking proper. Because that's just... Uh, that's too much. That's too much white. That's not going to do well outdoors in the sun. It's got some crispiness on it, on those white leaves only though, right? The ones that are a little bit deeper green, not even very much, just slightly deeper green, no problems. But the ones that are all white, they're getting that crunch to them. I think that that will improve with the light or this entire shelf being moved up. Because before, you know, this was down about eight inches. So the light was right around here. I think it was just too much for it. So I really need to pay attention to what happens with this next leaf that unfurls from the inside. That'll be the only way to really know how it's doing is to see what goes on with that one. I think it has, yeah, it does. It has one little sucker coming up off of it, which is nice to see when a plant is stupid expensive that they're going to produce more. I always appreciate that. I think that this could get bumped up into a larger container. I could put this up into an eight inch at this point. I'll probably wait a couple of weeks until I'm sure that the really, really cold temperatures moved out of our areas. Even though this is a controlled environment, the heater still struggles if it drops into the teens, and we could still have a few nights in the teens over the next couple of weeks. I don't want to repot in Alocasia specifically if I'm not going to be able to provide consistent warmth for it because they take root so much better in a nice warm environment. That's all I really have to say about it is it's beautiful. It's been really sturdy for an alocasia. Alocasia sometimes indoors, the variegated ones can be a pain, but this one, it's been great. In fact, even with the spider mite situation that was happening out here when there were lots of them, this one, I sprayed it regardless just to be safe, but it was right next to plants that Waikiki was right here and this was right next to it. And I'm sure there were spider mites on it, but they weren't very bad. So that's been nice, too. I'm not saying it's resistant, but uh, it just didn't seem to be one of their favorites. One of the spider mites' favorites to chew on. It's fun. Very colorful. You get a nice minty splatter of color every leaf. Totally different. I guess that's just the case with variegated plants, though, right? I don't have to point that out. I'm pretty happy with this. It's not a huge change, but I think as far as how the plants are going to be doing over the next few weeks, I will notice a huge change. Especially with everything down here on the lower shelf, that light being closer. The ones up here, I don't know how much of a difference there will be other than hopefully not having as much crisped up foliage. Wouldn't expect much difference at all out of these Shiverianas. The Okinawa Silver should be happy to be up here. And everything else that I showed and haven't put back on the shelves, I have in a pile and a pile sitting on a table to be repotted. Like I said, I may end up waiting to do that. I don't know yet. I'm going to watch the forecast over the next couple days and make up my mind. For now, I'm pretty happy with this. I'd say this is a pretty good improvement. It's more space for some of the plants up here. And that's another thing. I don't have to fill the shelf up. I keep telling myself like, oh, there's more room. They will do better not being crammed right up next to each other. So having some space for them, it's not a bad thing. Bottom shelf, that's not as much of a concern because they're still small that they're barely even touching. The pots are touching, which can be a problem. Having issues with certain soil dwelling, pests or diseases, that's something to avoid. That's not something I've noticed as of now, so I'm not concerned about it. But best practice is to have some space between everything. I just, you know, do, do as I say, not as I do. How about that? I have too many plants. What do you want from me? I can never have too many plants. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I enjoyed getting to go through everything. I'm loving seeing how things are growing. It's nice to be able to give an update every now and then. I'm not always great about remembering to do that. I'll unbox something and show it to you, and then you may not see it for several months sometimes. Or heck, I, what, some of these plants you haven't seen in a couple of years. This one I don't think I've talked about very much since last year. Maybe a little, but not very much. I'm going to wrap it up. Everybody's doing well. How are your plants doing? It's that time of year. We're moving into spring. The days are starting to get longer, so it's starting to become a good idea to be paying attention to what needs to be repotted start planning for that things that need pruning it's a good time to start doing those things and of course as always staying on top of disease and pest prevention that's always part of it right so everybody's doing well having a great day great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye